Tonight, she's going to bring the two sides of the world together, and you are going to see the premiere performance of Greetings to the Motherland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Laurie Anderson with Ai Weiwei. Welcome to Greetings to the Motherland. In a little while, we're going to be sty Skyping with the great visual artist and social visionary, Ai Weiwei. And um, we'd like to thank Toronto for hosting this exchange. It's going to be on Mandarin and English. How many people speak Mandarin here? Four. <laughs> Four, okay. We're gonna have a, a simultaneous translation as well out on these screens, so keep an eye on that. Um, also, for those of you who Skype, you know, it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> so uh, we're going to give it a shot. Um, but let's see, um, can we see if we can get online now? Let's see if we can uh, get a signal from Beijing. See if they're on. Uh, let's tap in and see if we can talk to, yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Yeah, okay. So, uh, can you say a couple of words so we can check the signal? Hi, Tower Things in Beijing. Okay, you got him. Okay, so we're we're still setting up, and we'll be starting in a few minutes. So, stand by. Um, also, there's been a little bit of a hum here. You can get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. We'll be back on Skype in a second. Um, First, I wanted to ask you if any of you've gotten in, uh, any of those Google glasses. Do any of you have those yet? Anybody here have a Google? Yes. Okay. The same number as speak Mandarin. Okay. Okay. I got. I've got these. I'm going to be using these on and off tonight. And these are. Uh, I can see a lot of stuff in these. Um, and let's let's see if we can uh, get a little signal here. Yeah. Okay. 
So here we go, let's go.
So are you ready out in the truck now? Are you ready for the Skype? Okay. We're dialing in now. Let's see where we got this feedback happening. One, two, three, four. One, 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 two. The person who we are trying to reach is currently unavailable. Oh, okay. Please leave a message after the beep. We're gonna try later. <coughs> okay, got him? All right. Okay. Right. Should I start? Yes. Should I? Oh, uh, all right. Hello, this is Ai Weiwei, coming to you from my studio in Beijing. Hello to you all in Toronto at Illuminato Festival. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear, you hear you. We can hear you. Hello, wait, 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 thanks for calling in. Can you hear everything okay? Okay, let's go. You're gonna talk about China and I'm gonna be okay. talking about the US, right? <coughs> yeah? You got it? So I start now, right? Yes, yes, here we go. Okay. 2011, April 3rd. I was arrested and detained for 81 days. The detention shell was in a secret location and nobody was supposed to know. My face was covered with black hood. We drove for two hours and reached that destination. It's a single room, three meters 60 by seven meters 20. There was a toilet, a shower, a table and a bed. Two interrogation chairs, one armchair for the suspect. I was handcuffed to the armchair. Two military soldiers always standing next to me 80 centimeters away. They stand still, never move. Their eye never looked away from me 24 hours a day. And I had to walk five hours in the length of a three meters 60 which are six large pals on the floor, back and forth. So I walked over 1,000 miles. And the lockpick was always on during my sleep. They read my writings on the internet, my blogging and the tweeting materials in their hands. They accuse me for subversion of state power. But suddenly, they just let me go. They read my writings on the internet, my blogging and the tweeting materials in their hands. They accuse me for subversion of state power. But suddenly, they just let me go. That's how I was detained, telling me I would be sentenced for 13 years. Suddenly, I was released. There was no explanation of why. again okay all right let's try again calling Beijing let's see if they pick up hope they pick up you see me okay. yeah okay. Oh, okay all right I hit I, I can hear the sorry I can hear the Kind of like a talk yeah on your side like a talk yeah yeah okay good you're, you're good. not talking yeah okay. no i am talking now 
Okay, here we go. <coughs> Hello and welcome to Toronto. And greetings to the motherland. But before we go on, I just want to mention a couple of names. Julian Assange. And Bradley Manning. And Ed Snowden. Let's hear it for the whistleblowers. Yeah. Also tonight we have Greg Sonia on drums. And Doug Weaselman on horns. And Evan Kong on viola. And on all, all of you out there tuning in on the web tonight, out there and somewhere, So welcome to the internet. Who knows how it became the new dragnet. But hey, it's okay, because you agreed to this a long time ago. Your silence will be considered your consent. Constitution, written out in a long hand. The way out here, way out on the broadband. Anything goes, we Americans have nothing to hide. What's wrong with America? What's happening here? What war is this? What time is it? Greetings to the motherland. Yeah, greetings to the motherland. Yeah, greetings to the motherland. Say something about China. Let's talk about China. 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 Father is a writer, writing poetry after he got arrested. Exiled over 20 years, he was sent to clean toilets. He was not allowed to write a word, clean certain toilets in a village, and made the cleanest toilets in the world. There's no door, no roof in those restrooms. There are flies in the restrooms. He cannot get rid of the flies.
the way to China Something that chimed and made the sound of money I'll say, can you see what's happening here? Don't ask too many questions, brothers Don't ask too many questions, sisters Yeah, greetings to the motherland Greetings to the motherland Yeah, greetings to the motherland From the NRA, after the massacre in Newtown, Connecticut, give the guns to the teachers. And while you're at it, why not give the guns to the janitors? I remember our janitor, little guy, Arnie Whitfield. Not the brightest bulb in the school. Don't know if he can handle the gun. I can see him now, running down the hall with a broom in one hand and a semi-automatic assault weapon in the other hand. Give the guns to the janitors. Give the guns to the janitors. David Foster Wallace, the writer, said, Every love story is a ghost story. Yeah, every love story is a ghost story. Every love story is a ghost story. China is only a story. China is only a story. China is only a story. You know, the National Rifle Association has been campaigning in Texas to convince women to carry guns, handguns, in their purses so that they'd feel more secure. Now, Ann Richards, the late governor of Texas, said, now I'm no sexist, but there's not a single woman in Texas who could find a gun in her handbag. Say something about China. Let's talk about China. Say something about China. Let's talk about China. Say something about China. Let's talk about China. Say something about China.
And hello to our Canadian neighbors. Yeah, our hosts up here in the great white north. Yeah, back down south, we're always, uh, we've been saying it for years. If Bush gets elected, I'm going to Canada. If Reagan gets elected, I'm going to Canada. If Palin gets elected, I'm going to Canada. But did anyone show up? Did they? Did they? Let's see, America. We saw it. We tipped it over. And then we sold it. Another day, another dollar, another day in America. China's only a story, China's only a story, China's only a story, China's only a story. Let the girls poison. Dead paint flows on the river. The land grows poison. Dead paint flows on the river. Every 100 citizens is in prison. Yeah, I round them up. And if you don't like it, you can just shut up. America is only a story. America is only a story. Words with the word the in front of them. The truth. The war. The end. The future. The lights. The PRC, the USA, all America. We saw it, we tipped it over. That we sold it. And if you live over there in Pakistan or Afghanistan or Turkmenistan or Yemen, you might be high on a hit list, the president's wish list. He can hit you, knock you out of the park. He can kick you way out into the dark. Cause lately that's just his American style. Sentenced to death without a trial. Sentenced to death without a trial. Hey, let's look at you and your Google file. And I only a story, 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 and I mystical. No one has a voice. No one has a ticket. No one has a voice. No one has a ticket. No one can make a sound. No one can freely break. No one has a voice. No one has a ticket. 
No one has a voice. No one has a ticket. No one has a voice. No one has a ticket. No one has a voice. No one has a ticket. By the way, if you're watching at home tonight, or if you're tapping in online, or if you're on a chat line or happen to be uh, with the CIA or the NSA, or any of the prisms, or any of the clouds, or if you're streaming, or if you just, you know, think you may only be dreaming. I want to encourage you to call the following number, 202-456-1111, you got that down? To express your opinion on the current trial of Bradley Manning. Now please call now because they're going to be busy tracking all these calls. only a story, and it's only a story. We'd like to see how many they can track simultaneously, everybody ready? Call now. Two one two four five six. You can use your cell phones. Go ahead. One 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 one. Direct to the White House. And from here, zero one two zero two four five six one 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 one. Okay. Okay. That must have crashed it. Okay, <laughs> we're just going to uh, we're just going to look out on the truck one more time. Make that call again. Here we go. Didn't like that last suggestion. Okay. Yes, he's back. All right. Here we go. Some say our empire is passing, as all empires do. And others haven't a clue what time it is, or where it goes, or even where the clock is, anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. Ah, America, we saw it, we tipped it over. And then we sold it. That's America. The river overflows. The dust bowl grows. Katrina and Sandy Wongals. Meanwhile, Monsanto is selling sterile seeds. Here's another idea. Coming through the slaughter. Charging money. Charging money for the water. Charging money. Charging money for the water. Oh, 
我没醒来，天一个算一个，中国你睡着了，天一个算一个，啊，中国，哦，这中国，啊，中国，哦，这中国，中国你没醒来，天一个算一个，啊，中国，啊，这中国，啊，中国，啊，这中国，你没醒来，天一个算一个，中国你睡着了。Yeah, this boat is tipping over. Now, America, we saw it. We tipped it over, and then we sold it. The war is this. The time is this. Greetings to the motherland. Greetings to the motherland. 
I was thinking of you. And I was thinking of you. And I was thinking of you. And then, I wasn't thinking of you anymore. Getting some strange crosstalk here. <laughs> so you guys can play a little bit, and I'm gonna just shut down. And I'll be right back.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't know if any of you, um, I don't know if any of you know this story. It's a really, it's a really ancient story from an ancient play. And the play is called The Birds by Aristophanes. And the way it goes is, there are, are like a couple of poets and they're walking along down the road and they're leaving Athens and they're, they're like griping about this and that and you know, they're talking about how, how fake everybody is and you know, they've kind of had it with the city really. They're just kind of like, a, it's just such a scene they say, you know, like the people are such imposters and like social climbers and on and on like that and they're trudging along and one of the poets sees a bird and suddenly he has this idea. And he says, okay, okay, I, I've really got a great idea. Uh, and it's about, it's, about, it's about birds. And he says, we've got to get all the birds together to explain his idea. And so, you know, the word gets out and the birds start arriving from everywhere and sparrows, dodo birds, you know, robins, skylarks, bald eagles, Pigeons, swallows, white-crested woodpeckers, tons of wrens, pelicans, cuckoos, you know, on and on, snowfinches. Did I say penguins? Penguins. And it was like really, it was really a mess. And the poet got on a, up on a platform and he said, birds, all you birds. And he could hardly make himself heard, but he kept yelling, at, listen, attention, I have this, I have this idea. So just quiet. And after a while, things kind of calmed down enough for him to say, okay, okay, okay. No. So I have this idea, and the birds are really like scattered. They're like, what? You know, they can't, they can't concentrate for too long. And the poet said, listen, this is the idea. It's an opportunity for all you birds. It's a financial opportunity. And they're talking to each other like, wow, what, a, what is opportunity? I, you know. And uh, anyway, he says, Listen, the world is divided into two parts. There's up there and there's down here. And they're like, what? What does he mean? I don't know. And here's how it works. He says, you know, when the gods come down on earth disguised as bulls or swans, whatever, you know, and they swoop down to grab up a boy or a girl, you know, and take them off. And when they do this, when they come down to earth, they come through where? Your territory. And the birds are like looking really confused now. You're like, what, you know, what are we got? And then, and he says, and when they come down through your territory, do you charge them anything for this? No. They come, they go for free. They come through your border free of charge. And on the other hand, the humans are praying to the, the gods and they build these big pyres and they burn all these animals and Smoke comes up from the pyres, rises up through, again, I ask you, where? Through your territory. And again, do you charge them anything for this at all? No, you do not. Now that's my point here. There's a business opportunity for you birds, a business opportunity that you've been missing. Now, most of the birds are not really following this argument, they just, they don't know a lot of the words the poet's using. So they, they get the general idea that something's being pitched to them, and they get that. So there's a kind of excitement building about, and they don't know what, and then the poet says, so when you, listen, you birds, here's what you have to do. You have to build a wall, a border, between up there and down here. And whenever anyone, anyone crosses the border, you charge them, right? And this creates quite a stir, because the birds are like, what? You know, like, build a wall? What do you mean? That sounds like a, you know, it sounds like a, like a big project. That sounds like a lot of, you know, work. And we're like, you know, we're like birds, like, like we don't work. You know, you, you know, we've probably heard the words, you know, phrase a bird, that kind of thing, you know. But this idea is really catching on now. Even though they don't really understand how it actually works. And in the play, they really actually do build this big wall. Now here's the thing. I can't tell you the end of the play because it's really complicated and you just have to read it for yourself. 
But I can say it was complicated in the way that the wall between Israel and Palestine is complicated. It was complicated the way the wall between Mexico and the United States is complicated. It's complicated the great wall, the way the great wall of China is complicated, the way, like all walls, are complicated. Thank you. Thank you.